The names and faces of the victims are now starting to emerge. Among them, a youth bowling coach, a loving husband and grandfather, a mother working part time at the bowling alley, and the cousin who witnessed it all. I had a chance to speak with the family of one of the victims, Trisha Aslin, who was in the bowling alley when the shooter opened fire. Tonight, her cousin Tammy and Tammy's daughter Tony are remembering Trisha and talking about the harrowing moments they both experienced inside that bowling alley. Do you feel like you're still in shock? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I go through my moments where I can feel my emotions are basically closed, mm. where you kind of block them. And then other moments where the, you know, you let the feelings come in. Mm -hmm. But it's um, a very surreal thing. Surreal. How have you been explaining this to Tony? The sad part of it is, is, um, Tony and I got lost in the scuffle. So I didn't know where she was. Um, so I didn't get a chance to really talk with her um, that well or that much till this morning. And um, we, I asked her how she's feeling and how she's doing. And she seems to be doing okay, surprisingly better than I thought. But I also can tell that she hasn't really processed it yet, mm -hmm. that she probably doesn't understand the intensity of it all. Tony, how did you describe it a little while ago? Like a horror movie. Can you just explain what, what happened from your perspective last night? I saw someone get shot, and I saw, bl like, blood splatter everywhere, and they just fell off their chair and they weren't moving and then one of the bowling coaches said to like get over here because I guess he knew what a gunshot sounded like and so I ran out the exit I didn't know where my mom was and I ran with three other people to subway and so there were a lot of kids right because it was a kids bowling league yes right and so did a lot of the kids run out too? Were you able to see that? I wasn't sure because I was near the candle pin section. There's like big balls, a little, like I think four lanes of big balls and I was bowling and I couldn't tell if like there was other people like going out, like getting shot. All I saw was that one person and I just ran. And what were you, were you screaming? Were you crying? What were... I was trying to stay a little bit calmer, so I wasn't like really hyped up. But then when I realized my mom wasn't fine, following me, I kind of started crying. Mm. And then when did you see mom? Mm. Not till this morning. This morning. Mm. And what, what was that like, seeing that mom was safe? Mm. Happy. Yeah. So, so mom, tell me about from your perspective. You're taking your daughter out for a kids bowling league. It's on something a, we do every Wednesday. Ordinary Wednesday. It's night. an ordinary Wednesday. When did you realize something is terribly wrong here? You know, it's sad to say that it took me longer than I expected because, you know, we we talk to everybody talks and says that, you know, you hear gunshots, you're, you know that you're gonna, you know, run, hide or whatever. But when you haven't heard gunshots before and it's the first time you hear, you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So here we are in a bowling alley and we hear this loud, this loudest sound. It's, I guess you could attribute it to almost like a firework going off inside, but like really nearby. And we all heard that sound and I didn't know what it was. And I thought, my God, did something happen to the machinery? Did somebody fall on the bowling alley? Is, you know, is everything okay? Then as I got up, I heard a second shot, but I didn't know it was a shot still at that point. And I saw people scurrying down the bowling alley, um, lanes themselves and people scurrying around. And then I saw a few people behind the counter, at least one person behind the counter fall. And I couldn't tell if they were ducking or if they had been injured and people were coming towards me. And 
I see people behind me like scurrying, but I'm still more or less kind of frozen, which is kind of scary to think about. But I panicked for that brief moment. And also then also wondering where she is, but then realizing I can't find her. I don't know where she is, but I have to get safe because at that point I had seen him and he was pointing the gun towards our direction or starting to go towards that direction. And uh, that's when I fell on the ground and I I hurt myself, but eventually we um, got a table to flip over and we had a booth in that corner that we used to put a wall up, but it really isn't much protection. And that's, and you know it, you know, and the whole time I'm thinking we're sitting ducks um, and we can hear more shots going off, but I'm the whole time I'm wondering where she is. And I called 911 at um, some point. I used, I didn't know where my phone was at that point. It, it had flown. Um, and one of the kids that bowls with us, um, I was, he was laying behind me. And I used his phone to call 911. And there was another couple of individuals in our group where we were hiding that had also, I guess, tried to reach 911. But yeah, it, um, it still doesn't feel real. Mm. Like, it just doesn't feel real. Did you think you were going to die? I didn't have that thought at that moment because I think I was more worried about what had happened to her. And I think when it's happening that quickly like that, I don't know if... You certainly panic about dying and you certainly think, that it's going to happen, but there's, it's amazing how many thoughts can run through your head and yet still not be the thoughts that every might, everybody might think it'd be, it'd be like, you know, your immediate fear of dying. But I, like I said, my concern was more on where she was and whether or not she was safe because I had a fear that she had ran towards the sounds too because, like I said, a few of us adults that were sitting next to each other when we heard it initially responded like somebody needed help or we're looking to make sure that things were okay. It got chaotic after that. Did he seem to just be shooting indiscriminately? It didn't feel that way. I mean, at first it did. It just, it, it felt targeted, especially like afterwards when we were laying there and any minute I was waiting to see his face come around that corner. And that was the most daunting part because I'm laying there on my back face, you know, on my back laying flat and there's a table in front of me, but I've got nowhere to go. I'm just sitting there and I can still see the corner and I'm like, he's going to see me if he comes around that corner. And we could hear some scuffling and a few yells, but we didn't know what was going on because of where we were hidden. But he took all his aggression out and... I don't know, it felt targeted. It felt targeted at that direction. And um, the people who unfortunately lost their lives. And the sad part of it is, is all the kids were right there at the entrance. They're, you know, and thank God to the quick thinking of some parents who didn't even turn to look. They just grabbed the kids and said, run. Mm. And an employee who works there help them hide behind the bowling alley um, and behind behind everything. There's a, apparently an office space there and they barricaded themselves in there. And some other people that work there barricaded themselves in the freezer and some in an office. And I mean, uh, most of us were out in the open though. Tell us about your cousin. <sighs> the sad part is I didn't know she was there that night. And um, I know she works there because we see her quite often when we go there. She was there, or I know she bowls too. And um, it wasn't until the end of the chaos when somebody says, you know, I need to find out what she, what, you know, if, how she's doing. And I'm like, oh my God, she's here? And I'm like, I don't see her. I don't see her outside amongst those of us who got out. And then I was told by somebody who was there, that saw her, but she was the most fun person. She was always happy-go-lucky, and um, 
I just feel devastated for the loss of her family and especially her son. Um, there's a lot of people who I've lost for sure, but she, uh, I'd like, I, with her being so close to the kids, I would like to think that she had, was doing something to try to help them, you know. What oh, happened that you and Tony were separated all night? You know, during that whole thing, I didn't know where she was because, like I said, I was frozen there for a split moment. But when I looked for her, she had already bolted, which I already said to her, I'm like, you did the right thing. You went and got yourself safe. You know, that's fine. You know, keep yourself safe is what I've always said to her. You know, don't come back for me or for anybody. Always keep yourself safe. But so you've I, talked to Tony before about this kind of... Yeah, what to do if ever there's something, mm. you know, not necessarily expecting it would be this, but, you know, if she's ever in an emergency a situation with friends or whatever, is that she should always take care of herself first. And then if she's able to and it's safe to, to take care of others. But I never would have thought this would be the conversations that I had been preparing her for, ever. Did you have a hard time going to sleep last night? Mm, a little bit, but I was really tired. Mm -hmm. And how are you feeling today? Mm, I feel better because I know that he, I know that he isn't caught, but I know I'm still not there. The last question, I, I know he's not caught, Yeah. but do you feel on edge? Do you feel like he's still in the area? I did last night. I felt very vulnerable, for sure, mm -hmm. last night. But, yeah. Um, I don't think... It's going to take us a while, but I want to make sure we feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I don't want her to feel like this is the end. I want to make sure that she understands that there's a moment in our time and that life will move on yeah. and that we will get through this and um, things will be okay. We're going to try to get back to some normalcy as... Mm -hmm as soon as we can and as comfortable as we can, so. I can't thank you enough for talking with us. Tony, I appreciate it. I know it's not easy, but I, I thank you and I'm so glad you're safe. Me too. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.